Hello, we're going to be talking today about how to use the Google Translate Chrome extension for our English learners in a classroom setting. Uh, the first thing you'll want to do if you haven't already is to install the Google Translate Chrome extension. You can do so from the Chrome Web Store. We have a link right here for you. Uh, also a short URL, a bit.ly right here. Once you get that successfully installed, you're going to look for this Google Translate icon right over here in your Chrome extension bar. And so you'll notice if I go all the way over here to the right, I can see the Google Translate icon right over there. The first thing you're going to want to do with students is you're going to want to have them uh, set up their native language options. Um, so the way you do that is you come over to this icon, you'll do a right click on the Google Translate icon, and you'll go down to the options uh, portion here. When students select options, it'll give them a little um, browser tab that looks like this. So it says primary language. You want to think of this as uh, the native language for your students. So if I'm a native Spanish speaker and I am an English learner right now, I will want to go select in here Spanish as my native language or as my primary language. This means when you run a translation on a website, the language I want it to translate into is Spanish by default. And then the other thing I would encourage you to do is to make sure that this first option is on. Display icon that I can click to show pop up. There's some other options here for you. I think this is the best one for students. So make sure that's on and then click save. And uh, you'll notice options have been saved right there. So you'll need to guide students through this process on their devices. And then it will get saved to their um, Google accounts. These kind of these preferences will be saved. I'm going to close this tab now and I'm going to go back over here to this Google Doc. Um, what I want to show you now are three ways that you can have students use the Translate um, Google Translate Chrome extension in the classroom. So as an example, I've pulled up a website here, and this is kind of a representation of a website that a teacher might be using in class. So uh, they found this, the science website, they pushed it out to all their students, maybe in Google Classroom or something like that. And then the assignment for students is to jump onto this website, do some reading and then complete a comprehension activity afterwards or something of that nature. Um, this is the kind of assignment that might be a little challenging for some of our non-native English speaking students because there may be some tough vocabulary in here. Um, there may be some difficult context clues that, that they're having a hard time picking up. So I'll show you three different ways that you could use Google Translate on this website. The first thing you could do is you could encourage students to come over here when they find a word that they don't know. Maybe it's a tricky vocabulary word like precipitation they could highlight this word. And after they highlight it, you'll notice we now get this little pop-up icon for Google Translate. So now students can click this icon and you'll notice, boom, we get the translation features right here on this website. We never had to leave it. We didn't have to go out to translate.google.com. Right from here, we're given the English word precipitation and then the Spanish um, translation of that. You'll notice that you also get read aloud buttons for both of those. So students could have this word read aloud to them in English. Precipitation. They could also have it read aloud to them in Spanish Precipitación. or whatever their native language is that they've selected. Now, if you have students that you want to dive a little bit more uh, deeply into this, you'll notice in the bottom right hand corner, you get this little more option. Um, if students were to click that, it would automatically take them over to translate.google.com. And if you've never been over here before, you'll notice on the website, it's full of a bunch of additional features. So um, you'll notice over here, you get different definitions of that word. This might be helpful for some of our students. You'll get examples of the word used in a sentence, including more examples. You'll get synonyms. You'll get antonyms if they apply for this particular term. You'll also over here on the translation side, you'll get alternative translations as well. So uh, maybe the, the default translation wasn't the right one for this context. Um, there'll be some additional um, options for students as well in, in case they're um, still a little unclear. So a lot of additional resources over here. And again, you don't even have to click or you don't even have to navigate to translate.google.com. You just click more and it'll do all the work for you. All right, so that's the first way, highlighting a single word. I'm gonna close this now. The other way that you could use this is to have students highlight a whole phrase or a whole sentence or even a whole paragraph that they want translated. So let's say a student is reading and they get down to this part and they get to the final sentence in this paragraph and they're just a little confused about the meaning of this sentence. You can click the Google Translate button and now you'll notice it translates not just a word but an entire sentence and it tries to get um, grammatical translation aspects of this correct as well. So sometimes that can really help for context clues for students. All right, the third way that you might want to use this is let's say you have a student that jumps on this page and they would like the entire page translated for them into another language. Let me show you how to do that. If you go up now to the Google Translate icon, this is what you'll need to translate the whole page, and left click on that icon, you'll notice you get the translation box. 
So students could type in there and translate a word. They could type precipitation and it would do a translation or copy and paste a whole sentence. But you also get this option here to translate this entire page. So now once we click this button, you'll notice what it will do is it will translate the entire page into Spanish since I selected Spanish as my default native language. So here's the whole page translated. You'll notice it's the text, but it's also even the menus up here because the menus were all just in plain text. So Google was able to translate all of those. In fact, the only thing on this page that didn't get translated were any of the graphics, any of the images. You'll notice over here this water cycle image. This isn't text here. It's part of the image. So obviously translate cannot work on that. Same thing with the title up here. But any other text, including if I scroll down here, the names of these videos have all been translated for us, the contact information, everything on here, any text-based content all gets translated for students. If they then want to go back and toggle back and forth between original text and translated text, there's a little button up here in the toolbar to do that. So we can just pop back and forth between these two things. Um, a really valuable and beneficial tool for students. So that's it. Three different ways to use Google Translate. Translate a single word, translate a whole entire phrase by highlighting and clicking the icon, or go up to the Google Translate Chrome extension and you can have an entire page translated all at once for a student.